Daryl and Adrian and Gina, and they are from Carolina Ghost Story. Thank you all for coming out today. I'm actually really appreciative of the attention that you're giving to us. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right. Raise your hand if you believe in ghosts. Wow. All right. How many of you have seen ghosts? All right, I'll start with you. What did you see? Well, I've seen quite a few things in my lifetime. I've saw, like, um, apparitions, like black shadowy figures and white shadowy figures. I've seen um, this one look like a, a human, but it didn't have any eyeballs in its sockets. It was like just hollow eye sockets. Mm -hmm. And that's not all. But just that type of thing. Well, what kind of area did you see it? Was it day, night? Anytime. Oh, anytime. That's interesting. Yeah. But the one that was like the most human looking was uh, the middle of the night yeah, in my right. grandmother's house. Yeah, and she, usually, in fact, had told me that her house was haunted. So. Yeah, usually, if you see a ghost, it's at night, at night obviously, right? Mm -hmm. All right, who Sometimes. else has seen a ghost? Anybody else want to give a story? Mine was more like orbs, but um, there was, if you, you know how on a fan you actually have to pull the light and you will hear it click? and the light had actually turned off, and then I got to about where that table is, which was where my bedroom was, and the light was on, and obviously there was no kind of click, and when I turned the light off, I'd kind of seen like some orbs and things like that. Um, and the apartment that I actually lived in, um, there was all kinds of different things that had happened um, as far as, there'd be things that, like your toothbrush would be in the kitchen, and you just, you know, nobody else had been home. Um, the TV would turn on and off, the radio would turn on and off, you know, things like that that you would try and not think anything about until other things had happened. Right. Um, we had found out when we moved out that a gentleman had passed away of a heart attack. And what they did is uh, basically just kind of oh, took my good. apartment and the part he was in separated it. But I guess at one point it had all been one or whatever, so. How did you feel? Did you feel like it was evil, friendly? No, I felt like it was um, friendly, especially because it was um, to my ex-husband. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I felt like it was friendly. Um, normally that kind of stuff scares me, but mm -hmm. I was um, really at ease. But there was um, one nightmare that my ex-husband had um, had, and he was not, you know, the nicest person. And yours. He, he literally felt like he'd been stabbed in the back, and he was scared for me to even touch him. Man. I mean, he physically was in pain, and he said it was a dream that I had stabbed him in the back, and he wow. would not let me touch him. That, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Ninety-five percent of all ghosts you'll meet are humans that have died, and for one reason or another, they had to pass on to, you know, wherever they're going. And usually, their personalities are kind of cross over. So if they were a good person, they'll be a good ghost, and if they were a bad person, they'll be a bad ghost. And I think most people are good by nature, so most ghosts you run into, you know, I think they'll be the same way. You have to excuse us, we're kind of new to this, so I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> All right, do you have a question? I have a story. All right, go ahead. Oh, there's a little boy that runs around in our house and throws toys around, and he's got that, he's not, he's not even on his friend, really. and we just seen him a lot. You've seen him a lot? A lot. And, and some ghosts that you well, see... There's six of us that live there, and each of us seen him. <laughs> And sometimes when you run into a ghost, it's just like an image that keeps repeating itself, like a TV show, over and over and over again. And that could be what you're seeing, too. Like a residual. Yeah, a residual. Yeah. Exactly, yep. All right, go ahead, buddy. Um, can, a, um, can, a, can a house that has been owned by somebody else be haunted by a ghost? Yeah. And um, if, there was a, if there was a um, pet that died in that same area, would the... Would the um, go ghost of the pet could be there? Yeah. It could be. Matter of fact, I think I have a ghost of one of my kitties in my house. Because when I go to bed at night, I'll feel it jump on the bed. And I don't know which kitty, because I've had three and they live to be pretty old. But, but yeah, I do believe that. What do you think of this? I think it's my little kitty named Spice. I think it's Spice. Go ahead, buddy. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I literally feel like something like boom jump on my bed and and like literally when I wake up to feel it and nothing. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm pretty okay. sure it's one. It's one. It's a cat. One of our ghosts. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Ghosts of our cats. Does it scare you? No. It's no. Just, no. It just makes me think. Why don't we go down <laughs> it, it just freaks me out. It freaks, yeah, it freaked out. me out too. <laughs> I grew up in a haunted house, so I had a lot of stuff, a lot of stories to tell. We had um, visual occurrences, and it was pretty. That's what got me into this was the fact that you know the, the, the need to figure out what was going on. So it was, it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Oh. Yeah, I used to live in. Uh, a house also when I was younger. I'm very big into ghosts and stuff. I watch all the ghost hunters, uh, YouTube ghost hunters, everything. I've been into it for years now. Have you performed your own investigations? Mm-hmm. I would want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. We're just like you guys, you know. We've all got stories, and we just got together, and we're just going out looking for them. And I'd encourage all of you guys to do the same thing. Yeah, I watch a lot of like that. Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. No trespass. Yeah. yeah. Don't trespass. No trespass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a, lot, a lot of the people I've watched is uh, like original ghost hunters. Uh, I watch, uh, there's a guy on uh, YouTube called Tom Buckmeister. I watch him a lot. He's from the UK. A lot of people from the UK say that the whole UK is pretty much haunted. And it's got so much history. Yeah, yeah. And it's still like untouched history. Yeah. yeah, and if you guys ever want to go out and do your own investigation, it's really simple. The biggest thing is make sure you got a flashlight, obviously. So get back you. And just kind of well, do they, some research and, and figure out where you want to go and maybe go there during the day and look around so you don't like trip over anything or some kind of hazard there because you can't see it at night. Yeah, maybe it's like yeah. And um, as far as tools and stuff, take your cell phone, snap pictures. You'll be amazed when you go back and look at these pictures. If you zoom in, we're we, we going to be showing some pictures we've taken. You see all kinds of stuff. In yeah. And you've also got a recorder on your phone. You can record sounds and stuff. You can hear all kinds of things in that, too. So when you start out, you don't really need a lot. Just your cell phone and a flashlight. Mark, go ahead. Do so you ever have any um, experiences where you'll smell things, like cigarette smoke? Or mm-hmm. like that? Yeah. We, we've been doing that a lot lately in our house. So we quit smoking. My husband and I both quit smoking. Nobody in the house smokes, and all of a sudden we'll smell cigarette smoke. That's pretty common. Really? Okay. That and pennies, right? Mark, go ahead, buddy. Um, I kind of have a story. Mark, go ahead. Um, when, like a while ago, like a few months ago, uh, back in Pennsylvania, um, we all sat around the fire, like most of my family. And then, like, they just kept taking pictures. And then in one of the pictures, the fire was shaped like a door. Mm-hmm. And then, like, uh, somebody on the other side of the fire, they took a picture, like, right above my head. And then they saw, like, a figure of, like, a horse and then a guy riding the horse. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And the headless horse face bumps. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead. I have a, another story. Um, well, all of us witnessed, well, not only two of us only had it, had it like, happened to. It was um, her and my father. They got attacked by a ghost. She had scratch marks, and my um, dad had a silver necklace, and it felt like someone was pulling it. Against him and pushing his body against the wall. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a spoiler Yeah, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds like, like a demonic like force. Where it most sounds spirits, like I get a house blast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> most spirits don't really attack you or harm you. It's usually a demon that will attack you like that. That's exactly. And that's bad news if you got that. Yeah. Really bad. Yeah. Yeah. You had your hand raised for a while. I actually have two stories. Yeah, yeah. actually, it happened. Like, um, my first story is a couple years ago, I was in the recorder of my house, and 
I can't remember if I was talking to them or something, but two little girls with the same, with like red yarn hair were braiding their hair in the corner of my house. And it was, it was really weird. My mom was like, Gabby, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm talking to them. And my mom was just flipping out. And a couple years, and then a couple years later, I saw like the same thing my mom did, like a black figure with, without any eyes. It just right rose up from above my bed. And I couldn't move. I knew I wasn't, I knew I wasn't asleep. Cause like, I could like see around and everything and hear things. So you just couldn't move. Yeah. And it was just like looking at me and it started to scream, like open its mouth and scream, but I couldn't hear anything. Mm. It was weird. That is, that is very frightening. And I had a similar experience. I was like, what, nine, eight? Yep. That's the question also. Children tend to see ghosts a lot more than adults do. Mm -hmm. Have any of you guys seen I, any ghosts? I, 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 there was this some um, thing at the um, back of the. Um, I live close to the middle school, and I swear somebody saw a, a skeleton in a window in the middle school. Wow. Alright, go ahead. And I saw it too. I have a question and kind of a story. Um, I don't, I don't know. There's been a couple times where I was like laid down to kind of go to sleep and I wasn't all the way asleep and I kind of had things happen to me. Um, one was I um, had a roommate and they had were pregnant with their firstborn child and unfortunately um, went in to go have everything checked out and the baby had, you know was gone mm -hmm. um, and so I was in the room that was going to be the baby's room and I woke up and was extremely freaked out because I heard like a child's laughter and it was like they were jumping on the bed and going around in circles around me. And then um, like I could feel the bed moving and everything else and it just, it scared me. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I slept in my bed after that the whole time I lived there. Because there would be times that we would go out places and um, we would come in and like the front porch light would be on and nobody had been on. Like, almost like she was looking out. Yeah. Then. Um, and the second instance was um, I lost my sister when she was 18 and I was um, 13 years old. And right before I had um, my firstborn son, I had just like almost fallen asleep and she appeared to me. And I think it was, um, it just kind of freaked me out. And so like I, you know, like sat up and then she wasn't there anymore. And um, before she passed away, she was going to school to be a nurse. And I actually saw her like wearing a pair of white scrubs. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just, you know, That's different. So I don't know if that, you know, is like a true experience or, you know, something of the subconscious, but especially with the little kid thing. I mean, that's just. Yeah. So some ghosts attach themselves to you and they'll follow you your whole life. I've got several that I've carried with me since I was a little kid. Is he here right now? I don't see him right now, but yeah. it usually happens at night because a lot of times between like, Nine o'clock to six o'clock is when ghosts have their most energy. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And a skeptic would say that's really convenient that you only see ghosts at night. But, but Daryl doesn't sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many of you are familiar with the Lucas Bay life? The light of Lucas Bay? How many of you have heard that story? I, I think I did. You want to tell? Has, have, has anybody been down there and had an experience at the Lucas Bay Light? Um, well, um, it back when was it General Sherman? Yes. General Sherman was going to come in and lay waste to our area, Georgetown, down in the lower, what's that area Georgia. called? Bucksport. Bucksport. Yeah. I can't remember this stuff. <laughs> so, um, a woman who lived on the rice plantations down there with her family became frightened that that um, when he came through that not only would her home be destroyed but maybe her children so she had a baby because she went and hid underneath the bridge and that night a storm came through unexpectedly was it an unexpected yeah, storm it was. and as she ran back to get her baby the wooden bridge, it's gone now. They destroyed it about, what, 12 years ago? From what we gathered, yeah. Um, she slipped on that bridge, hitting her head and rolling down into the Sally, it's called the Sally Bridge, Sally Canal Sally Bridge. Sally Canal. Sally yeah. Canal Bridge. And as the rainwaters rose, it swept away her unconscious body as well as the baby. So now, what the legend has is that if you go down there, 
that uh, some people have been lucky enough to see a light going down, up and down the dirt road. And it's supposed it's, that said it's her looking for her lost baby. And some people have even said they've heard a disembodied baby crying in the distance. Yeah. So that's that's right now. That's one of our main investigations. We're yeah, trying. Yeah, that's to what we're working on for our first, first episode. Yes. Yeah. What? Um, that story. I heard something like similar to it that it's like a little lantern swinging back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth into a fog. I like, but it was like a railroad track, like what she, this woman told me, that it was this guy, guy looking for someone, and you could see the lantern swing back and forth on the railroad track. If you walk down it, she's actually experienced that, and that's why she told us the story. But I was about to jump to the woman. Yeah, lots of fables have that same common theme of somebody with a lantern looking for something. Like out here on 701, these railroad tracks, there's also a legend of a guy that walks up and down the tracks with a lantern and looking for his head that he, when he got the cap. Yeah, that's that's the sounds like the head. That sounds familiar. <laughs> yep. <laughs> head the torch. There are witnesses to the Lucas Bay Light who say that the light actually has come to, to them, basically. Most of the time when you see the light, you would be in your vehicle. You're supposed to turn your vehicle off, turn your lights off, and the light, for whatever reason, approaches the vehicle. But there have been witnesses that say, I'm talking with my hands, <laughs> it's a nervous habit, but <clears throat> that the light has hovered over their hood. Uh, we actually have interviewed a gentleman who says that the light actually chased him, that he saw the light, he got very scared, and put the pedal to the metal to get out of there and that light followed him half yeah, he was well. going like 50 miles an hour and the light was keeping up with him. Oh yeah, and, um, and some people have even said that the light has gone through their through their vehicle. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to figure out the whole story and tell the story. I have a good story. Go ahead, buddy. Um, there's, this, um, there's this person, actually there's this person in my mom's family and uh, he saw a ghost of, um, I think, one of our um, distant relatives. Because um, cause most of the houses um, where in um, Baseburg, Leesville, mm -hmm. where they live, they've been passed on to most of their family. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Can cats see, like, spirits and things, like animals? I believe so. Yeah, I yeah. hear yeah. that. Animals. I'm sure everybody's had an experience where your animals start freaking out for no reason. Yes. And then you get like a cold chill, like, what is going on here? And then I'm like, hey, that's my cat. Yeah. It's going to stop the distracts and you're going to freak out for no reason. Go ahead. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. I'm going to catch you. Together, um, I'd say actively hunting for about six months. Yeah, I've been a. We had to get everything put together, gathered our Yeah, equipment. we're, we're kind of new into the whole ghost hunting thing, but okay. all of our lives we've always had like things around us and stuff. That's what piqued our curiosity. That's what I'm saying. Have any of you ever hunted a woman? No. 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 It's not no. really new. <laughs> yeah. no. The thing about hunting alone, if you get hurt, there's nobody there to help you. And, and if you drop your phone, you can't call for help. That or that's the number one rule. Never hunt alone. You're never gonna. Say, you don't have a witness. So. Yep. Well, and I think it leaves you vulnerable to yeah. to attacks or just things happening. Um, whenever I was about 11 years old, I was ghost hunting. But if I would have known back then what ghost hunting was going to be today, I could have had a team a long time ago, about 30 years ago. Because I, I mean, I had um. I grew up in this area. I'm from Conway. Oh, and so is Daryl. But um, <laughs> I have no doubts that the area that I grew up in, which was off Highway 90, is a very haunted area. I couldn't tell you exactly the, the span of uh, space that I believe it to be haunted, but I know from where I lived to where uh, friends of mine lived, we always had experiences, um, different things, and we would just talk to each other about what had happened to us, and then someone else would have a story. So we would actually go looking for ghosts, and we would try to find the ghosts that we even believed were haunting us. Um, 
But yeah, I could have had my own, or we could have had a tax team over 30 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Do you want to come up and tell us one of your stories? Sure. The train track, maybe? I'm sure. dad. All right. Your dad? Mr. David Bush? Oh, yes. uh, you want to hear? Oh, okay. I'm at the roof. Yeah, he looks at the roof. He's crying. I'll sit down for too long now. I have to get the creaky bones moving again. <laughs> <laughs> This is a friend of mine, Mr. David Mish, who used to do ghost tours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, uh, I'm originally from up north, so at any point in the course of this afternoon, if I'm talking too fast, or you can't understand my strange accent, just slow me down. Uh, and just a little background on me, I, I've been interested in the strange thing since I was very little. Uh, we didn't have comic book stores, but there was a newsstand, and when I went there, I didn't get the uh, comic books or anything like that. I would get the... Uh, the UFO magazines and the uh, the ghost magazines since I was, you know, very, very small. So I've always been interested in that strange and unusual things. Uh, now, after I moved down here about four years ago, I had an opportunity to both uh, run a ghost tour for three seasons and also learn uh, some of the history, uh, some of the strange history of our area down here and have done a little research. So uh, I did that for three years. I did a 90-minute tour in Myrtle Beach. We talked about all the things uh, in the area downtown. And also we called in a lot of the stories along the, uh, the coast of South Carolina and North Carolina. Um, one of the stories that we talked about, Alice Flagg, we talked about the Gray Man. There was a uh, lighthouse keeper and his daughter uh, down in North Island in the Georgetown area. Uh, there were a bunch of different things, some local stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. One no, question no. that I had because it actually made the news was um, quite a few years ago, at least um, probably between six and eight, I remember um, near Mooresville, there was um, multiple people that called in and said that they saw a little girl walking up and down the highway. So they had police officers come out and search to see if there was a car accident or see if they could find her, and there was never any kind of explanation. I don't know if you remember seeing that on the news. Or no, not that. I mean, that, but that frequently happens. And uh, like Daryl was saying, these, uh, for a number of different reasons, these spirits remain here. Some of them yep. have unfinished business. Some of them find a place that they love during the course of their uh, life here, their mortal life, or their physical life, and remain in that place. I just have never seen it like yeah. that on the news, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, it will frequently happen. You have, you know, there will be UFO sightings where it gets called in, it yeah. makes the news. If you listen to your uh, uh, scanner, if you have a radio scanner, listen to that, yeah. you'll hear uh, instances of different strange things like that. But I certainly would, uh, unless if you folks have an idea of what... Uh, that place that you told me that was really active. Oh, okay. The, the train depot? All right. Uh, this is, actually, it was uh, a very interesting place. Now, I don't know, uh, are you folks familiar with the train depot down uh, downtown of Myrtle Beach? And if you go if you go off on Ninth Avenue and straight out there? All right, so I can talk about that, because that was an interesting place. And it, uh, before I headed out on the tour, I would, you know, talk to people, do an intro, and I would Oftentimes they would ask me, is there any place where I might feel, see, or hear something? And I said, there's a, there's a couple spots. I wouldn't tip them as to where it would be. And the train depot was a spot that was uh, uh, very active. We, we caught a lot of pictures there, images. So you would have 20 or 30 people standing around uh, someone's iPhone looking at images that you would have seen uh, during the course of the evening, uh, full body apparitions, uh, uh, orbs, and that kind of thing. And even, and sometimes, I don't know if you've had it happen where uh, a photo might show up, a, you know, an image might show up later on. It seems like sometimes they would take a little bit of time to develop. Mm -hmm. So I've had people come up to me on the street uh, later on that evening and show me, well, I didn't see this at first when I looked at it, but it, uh, yeah. you know, there, there'd be an orb or an image that they didn't see. But, but I'll give you a short uh, rendition of the uh, what we do on the tour. Yes, sir. I know you. I actually remember I watched this video. It was it was it was basically on like this news thing where where it was like a picture where this girl took and in the picture in like the background there was like like someone standing there was like someone standing behind her. Mm -hmm. It was like she was in like a vehicle and then there was like some there was like some black figure like like behind the vehicle and. I'm pretty sure, like, your dad was in the picture also, so he, he was, like, doing whatever he would do. I think he might have gone to, to, like, a flat tire, maybe, and his dad, and her dad was, like, fixing the tire. And, of course, yes, he just noticed that. 
Uh, you can finish that story the way hell. What I'll do is take one more question, then I'll tell you about the train depot. That was actually all right? it. Yes, sir. Um, there was this um, there was this one thing that I heard on the internet. There was this house that had, that was very, that had lots of stories. It had doors that leaded to leaded to um, a three feet drop, and, and it, it went very high. And um, the house um was uh, owned by the person that made this. It was owned by the wife of the person, the, um, the son of the person that made this rifle. That was You're there. talking about the Winchester house. Huh? Yeah, the Winchester. Winchester. Right. Winchester. We can talk about that later, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll we'll run Winchester into the, Mansion. That's right, the Winchester house. She believed that she had. She was told by a fortune teller she had to continue to build in this house, and if the day she stopped building, she would die. So she continued until she died. Yep. Alrighty. So folks, this would be somewhat what the story would be. We'd be looking at a brick building like this. Kind of an edifice. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Myrtle Beach Train Depot. Now, the train depot was built in 1937, or that's when the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony was. And uh, that's when it opened up. And for the next 30 years, it was a very popular destination. It's, uh, coming to the beach here became uh, increasingly popular, so people would take the beach. It only ended up being about two blocks from the uh, beach, so they could come in here, uh, bring all their gear, set up at the beach, and have a lovely holiday. Now, for the next 30 years, it continued to be very, very busy, a bustling hub of activity. In 1967, the train industry in the area started to slow down, so the city decided that they would sell the train depot, and they found a gentleman who uh, decided to open a business. He had a beverage distribution business, and he used that for warehousing and shipping. And that remained in that uh, manner until 1999. Now, at that point, uh, he had outgrown that facility and decided to sell the train depot. Uh, unfortunately, it laid dormant on the uh, market for quite a while, and the realtor said, well, this is what we should do. We'll tear down the building, the train depot here, and we'll sell it as a vacant lot. I'm sure, certain it would be easier to sell it that way. Now, there's a huge outcry in the town. Uh, all the, when the folks in town found out all about, all about it, they decided that they couldn't have that uh, building torn down because that building now is on the... Uh, register in National Historic Places. So Jack Thompson and some of the other more active members of the community raised $750,000. And what they did is uh, they purchased the building from him and they spent another approximately one and a half million dollars to renovate it. And it's one of the most popular uh, uh, meeting spaces in town. They just added a, a couple more railroad cars. They have a freight car and a caboose. They have all kinds of civic meetings there. They have had uh, banquets and weddings and uh, concerts, fundraising, etc., all that kind of thing. Now, there were, uh, in that 30 years where people would come to the beach, it was a very popular and happy, happy uh, place. Folks were coming for their vacations. But not all of the arrivals here at the train depot were happy, and not all the times were happy. During World War II, the train cars would come in, the train would come in, it would be filled with boxcars. Those boxcars would be filled with coffins containing some of the th some thousands of soldiers who perished overseas. Now the grieving families and widows would be waiting for them at the uh, train depot to receive their men and bring them home and make final arrangements for them to travel home. So with that thought in mind, there are many, many happenings, uh, strange happenings associated with, with that tragic event. Uh, and that's, a, that's an area where a lot of uh, orbs have been, uh, they've taken pictures of them there. Uh, one evening, we were looking inside one of the windows in the foyer, and there was a full body image of a woman standing there. She had, you know, of course it was, you know, black and white, but she had white hair, she had a long white dress, she had her hands crossed in front of her. We also saw uh, images of human faces looking through the window. And one evening, someone took a picture, and at first, you couldn't tell what it was. It was some kind of animal. And it, the thought at first it was a dog or maybe a pig, because the nose was pushed up like that. And after thinking about it for a second and looking at the picture, it was an animal, it was a dog or a wolf, and the nose was in fact pushed up against the glass. That's why it, it gave that uh, that strange image. What was a human? Well, there was an animal, there was a human face another time, and I hadn't uh, even realized there was a window up top in this little foyer. It was a circular window. And uh, one evening, as I had said, I have uh, had people who uh, I would ask, or they would ask me, you know, if they would feel anything. This one lady, she said, I was, I've been sensitive since I was a little girl. 
So she uh, came off the path, there's a cement walkway going up there, where they have the old uh, railroad trestles, the tracks there, uh, it's all sandy. The, the lady took a beeline right out of the, uh, of the uh, cement walk and she looked straight up and that was the first time I had seen this window and she said, uh, there's someone or something looking down at us. She immediately turned right to that spot and that's an area in that uh, building that I had never noticed. And in succeeding trips afterwards, we've taken uh, pictures. There I, you know, relayed that experience to everybody afterwards. And they, you know, there were pictures and images of, uh, of a face there multiple times. And also, along with the photos, folks have seen uh, some things up on the, uh, the uh, platform, the landing, where the, the uh, trains would arrive. And uh, people who have seen something report it seems to be a group of, of people huddled there. Uh, when they look at it, it's, it's a dark image, but they can tell pretty clearly that it was uh, a group of folks dressed in clothing from the 40s. And they will look, see that image right away, and it will quickly disappear. Along with that, sometimes on a quiet evening, they will hear, uh, you know, crying or sobs. They think maybe, maybe that's, uh, you know, energy left over. And as you were saying before, some of these things are, it's weird, it's like a tape loop yep. that keeps repeating, so people will see that kind of thing. And also there's, there's been reports of a, uh, a gentleman standing by the, uh, right by the siding, and he's standing at attention. Uh, the gentleman's, when they see him, he's been reported as wearing a uniform from that time period, from the 40s, World War II. And to me that makes sense, uh, even to this very day, when a fallen soldier returns from uh, overseas to uh, U.S. soil, there's an honor guard waiting for them. So this, uh, this soldier here is waiting for his fallen comrades, and of course he remains to this very day because many of them will never return, but he's uh, you know, remaining loyal to his, uh, you know, his task there or his, his duty. So uh, that's kind of the uh, cliff note version of the, uh, the train depot. If you get a chance to get on there, if you go to an event or whatever, uh, it might be interesting to uh, stay a few minutes. I know I've met the gentleman from town who opens and closes after the events, and he's a, another Yankee uh, uh, <laughs> now friend of mine. But when he closes it in the evening, he clears all the people out of there, he sets the tables and chairs, and he leaves right away. He doesn't want to be left there all by himself. I can, I'll tell you one other humorous story about this. Uh, one of the evenings I was out doing a tour, we came back from Nance Plaza, we talked about Blackbeard, and uh, I see, and I had seen the, uh, one of the patrol cars up at the uh, train depot, pulled back uh, right where we're at. I see the light switch around and another patrol car comes, and they pull over to the side and stop, and I notice they're talking to the folks in the back of the uh, my group, and then one lady said, oh David, these two officers want to speak to you. I was thinking to myself, this is fabulous. <laughs> two police officers want to talk to you. <laughs> so the older officer came up and said, uh, excuse me, but this, this young officer over here, he's a little bit shy, he's got a question for you. <laughs> and I said, okay, what's your question, sir? He said, well, we have a kind of a bet going here, and I, I just want to find out, is the train depot really haunted? And I relayed the whole story pretty much as I've told you folks here. He said, oh my goodness. He, first he turned to, to uh, his fellow officer, the older gentleman, and said, uh, well, you owe me a dinner now because I told you it was haunted. And by the way, I'm never patrolling up there all by myself ever again. <laughs> if it's haunted. So that's the, uh, the story, the legend behind the uh, train depot there, folks. All right. All right. All right. Well, Jackson, I'll see you in a little bit. We're going to um, hook up the projector here and show you a couple of pictures. That yeah, look at the projector. It'll make you blind. It will? Yeah. You have to squint. You're, you're going to watch that way. You're not going to How well these the photos are going to show because it's in kind of dark. In notification to me. But in Georgetown, right outside of Horry County, there's an area called the Old Gun Church. I'm not sure if any of these guys have ever heard of it. But it's, what it is is basically a, a facade of an old church that run down. And people will say that they've seen all kinds of things. We went down there a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we took some photos. And in this photo here, you can't really see it, but if I can get my mouse here, try to zoom in, maybe. Yeah, control, right in this area right here, which you can't hardly see it here, but there is an outline of a person standing there. 
I was hoping it would show up a lot better than it is here. I can swear this is the light part, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can barely make out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't even see it. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, when you go out, just take your cell phone out and just start taking pictures. And when you go back and look at it, you'll be amazed when you zoom in and look at all the different things you'll find. I'll do the other one too. What is that? And here I've kind of outlined it a little bit better, but it's still kind of hard to see on this projector. But all these pictures are on our face our Facebook page. If you go there, you can look at them a little better. But how did you make that? How did you make the arrow? Um, just in. We used Microsoft Paint. There you go. <laughs> what the heck, Microsoft Paint? This is a picture of me and Adrian. And if you zoom in on this guy, let's see. Here. No one does. Yeah, I zoom on nothing. Okay. Look under my elbow. I can't really see it there. And there's a clear face there. If you, I'll try to turn my laptop around, but you can really see it on my laptop here. Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh wow! Oh, oh, that's that's cool. Cool. Oh, my oh my God! That's creepy. What she say? Go have a There's nothing. No, there's no face. No, no, no. Look at my elbow. Oh, 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 yeah. Is it real? And if you look all the way in the back, you can also see a faint light back there. And the way the road runs, it's not a, it couldn't be a car because it's more toward the woods area. And once again, if you look at it on the laptop, you can see it a lot clearer. Oh, yeah. And here's a picture of Adrian out at Lucas Bay, and once again it's really dark, so you probably have to look on the laptop. Can't see anything. Nothing. Yeah. It's, it, it, that just looks like Halloween decoration. You can see what looks like a lady standing oh, in the background. Oh, 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 And once again, there's also another picture here. I can't see. Oh, and the um, projector is not our friend today. I'll turn this around again. I'm going to be sitting here. You changed it. You changed it. Looks like a gun. You changed it. It's going to go back. Yeah. Oh, that's, so there's an orb. There's some kind of orb and there's a horse. MC, That's scary. That's Wait, dad. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. 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 And the face. Her face. I'm, I'm seeing right see here. The face. The face. I can't even see it. Look at Spade. Is that the one with the lady looking for a baby? Looking for a baby, yeah. That almost looks like a baby face. Oh, did it? I think that is. And here, the camera just went off randomly and it picked up all kind of stuff, but you. Once again, you can't see, but it's like a fidget spinner. If you look on here, huh? you can For clearly see what looks like a face in this. Wait, wait, I need to see it again. Oh, wait, where? Right here. It's hard to see. I can't see. No, I can't see. I can't see. I can't see that. Oh, I never had a story. Oh, it's a cow. 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 It's a Oh, 
And this photo here is in the old Shelton County Jail. There's been about 20,000 people killed in this jail. Oh, jail. Since it was built in the early days. I'm pretty sure they were executed. I think you guys are the next person. And, and then the next photo, I lighten it up. When you lighten it up, okay. <coughs> well, can you can see what looks like red on the floor there. But up in the top, where the top arrow is, it looks like a shadow of somebody cleaning. But if you look on the top of the, it looks like a fridge on the top of the fridge right there. It does, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, but that's a can. It's like If you look between those bars, I can see you. Whoa! Yeah, like the see a lady's face there? Yeah, I can't oh, see you. Oh, oh, I see you. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you know. Oh, oh, I see you. Oh, she must have died there. Well, she was like, oh, she's floating. Oh, she's floating. I kind of highlighted it there a little. Get out of here. Well, we can definitely yeah. 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 scary. Oh, so Wow. I have to definitely see something scary. Sometimes when you take pictures. Yeah. It can be confusing because it's kind of like if you look up at the clouds, you can always make something out. So if there's any weird thing in the picture, your eyes are automatically draw to it. And sometimes you get a false reading. How are you not scared to just go and stand inside? Like on that, I had no clue that that was even there. Until I got home and was looking at the photos and I saw it. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of times they get scared. Oh yeah. And hide in the floorboard of the car. We were down at Lucas Trail last Friday night. The times we, we got there, we started setting up our equipment. We saw what, what we thought was the light. But you can tell the difference between a car and that light. And we started going down there, we were almost at a jogging pace. And we went probably, what, half a mile? Oh yeah. And then a car came through and when the car passed by, it was gone. Yes, that's the last slide. Yeah. Once again, I can't see. It's numbers on the side. We don't have a speaker hooked up, but I also got some um. Audio recording. Oh. Yeah. Not black and white. Um, Marker, sit down, please. I thought they were saying coral. Yeah. I thought they were saying coral. Give it fillers. Give it black and white fillers. Yeah, that's going to be like coral. Same. Carolina ghost hunting. Yeah, welcome to Carolina ghost hunting. Where instead of it being like actual ghost hunting, it's going to be like a ghost we're going to take stories down. No, not in line, Chef. Let me remember. Uh, in a basement elevator, 13 stories down. This one is right. Do I have my chair? I got that. I got that from Right, right, people. Mm -hmm. I know, but we're gonna go. I really want to do that. The sound that I was just playing, I'll play it again. <laughs> um, one of our little recorders here. Is that a ghost? When I was testing it out, this was like at three o'clock in the morning. I was all by my, everybody was asleep at six a.m. <coughs> when I played it back, you could barely hear it, and I boosted the sound real so. What it sounds like to me, she's saying, is something about helping and stuff. <coughs> See if you guys can hear.
Recorder here, I got off Amazon for 15 bucks. <laughs> now, I've got a really nice boom mic that I actually hook up to this sometimes when we're not doing interviews. Where is it? It's a boom mic. Do you have it? Yeah. Where is it? Back right here? It's in the camera bag. The blue one? No? This one. It's the very back. Oh, yeah, boom mic is just a big microphone. Oh, what? It's directional. Alright, we can turn the lights back on now. That's all the slides we have. And unfortunately, we haven't got any video footage yet of anything substantial. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Is it a animal color? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Is it a animal color? 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 Is it a because I, I see a little boy at my house. Hey, I seen him plain as day. He has a little kid running through my house. Mm -hmm. I'm talking. So, okay. <laughs> I own you. Uh oh. I had a friend's house, and we were, it was in the middle of the night. It was me, her, and her brother. We were all up, and we were walking through the living room, and a window, beating red eyes, and a black figure coming straight towards us. We ran. We grabbed a baseball bat and it was a help. I don't think it's baseball. Yeah, 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 I don't think it's baseball. Yeah